a lot of visitors, and we're glad that you're here today. You make yourself at home and do me a favor. Don't just see this and us and me. You listen for another voice today. The voice of, God, of the Holy Spirit speaking through his word. That's what makes church different from anything in this world. There's nothing in the whole world better than church when it's real. When it's real, that's the most satisfying, most uh, deep uh, uh, peace that you'll ever have in your life is church when it's real. Now, when it ain't, Lord have mercy. That's why you have to get a rock band to drum up something. Uh, when it ain't real, you, uh, it, it couldn't be no more boring. But when it's real, uh, there's nothing boring about the Bible and God when it's real and you believe it. Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to read some scripture about a father. Never done this before like this, but you'll get it what I'm trying to say. Here's our role model, fathers. Verse number 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. This is Matthew 6 and verse 7. Sorry about that. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Matthew 6 and verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. There's our role model, fathers. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now there's your ideal father. That's who I want to, pre I want to preach about this morning. An ideal father. We'll never be able to attain that. But that's our goal. To be as much like our heavenly father as we can possibly be. My goal and your goal as a father should be, look, look what kind of father God is. I'm gonna try to be like him. Um, being a father is an amazing thing. You'll do some growing up real quick when you look down and see that little baby. I, I'll never forget when Carrie was first born. You look down and you think, oh boy, that that. That thing's depending on me for a place to sleep, for food to eat, for clothes. I'm responsible. It's time. I'd, I, nothing will make you grow up any quicker than, I mean, of course, I mean, some people, I guess, don't get it. But I'm telling you, it, it's, a, it, it's a really, really wake-up call big time when you become an earthly father. Said several fathers were sitting, uh, uh, and I was kidding these folks back here, uh, Brother Ray's, Son-in-law and daughter <laughs> about having some more kids. They got a new one back there, and I was kidding them. Men go about having some more. Said so these four men were sitting in the uh, maternity waiting room. Their their wives are in a big, huge hospital. All of them having babies. These four men were sitting in there like this, running their hands, you know, nervous like this. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And and it was back then when they didn't know everything. And the nurse comes in and says, "Sir, I've got some news for you. Your your wife's having twins." He says, that is amazing. I, I work for the Minnesota Twins. How weird is that? And, and, and they all congratulate and everything. In a few minutes, she come back in uh, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, second guy. And uh, she said, sir, your wife is having triplets. He said, really? I work for triple A. How cool is that? He said, you reckon that means something? I don't know. They all talked to her a little bit. She came in. Next minute, she said, next man, sir, your wife is having quadruplets or whatever they call it, four of them. He said, oh, my goodness, that's unbelievable. I worked for four seasons. How weird is that? About that time, that last man jumped up and said, no, no. So I ran out the door, and he said, I work at 7-Eleven. 
Now you, now you know that it don't work like that. I'm glad it don't, ain't you? That would be bad news. But, you know, if, like I told them, after you get two or three, it don't matter how many you got. 24 hours a day is 24 hours a day. Two, nothing, 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 it's all the same. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, this morning I want to talk about uh, what, an ideal father. What is a father that's ideal, perfect? What's a perfect father? God is. So men, men, you, let's shoot for that. How about that? Amen? For all of you, if you're, if you're raising boys as a man, if you're a father of girls uh, or a mentor, maybe you're not a physical father, but you're a, you're a, a mentor to some young people or you're a, 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 an adopted father or foster father, something like that, uh, this is for all of you. Number one, number one, a real father is a protector. He's a protector. A father is concerned about your well-being. I know it'll get on your nerves sometime. Sometime, where are you at? Where are you been? You be here at a certain time. Now, sometimes you don't like to hear that, but a real father is a protector. God is that way. He's a protector. And, 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 the, and, if, and the prayer, he said, uh, uh, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He was saying, Lord, you want to watch over us. You want to protect us. He needs to make sure and will make sure that you are protected. There's not a man in here this morning if he's a real father that wouldn't, wouldn't take, take a bullet or take a hit or take some before he'd let it hit one of his kids. Amen? A real father is a protector. And sometimes you don't realize that until your father's gone. I said one time this man was standing out there in a storm and he was standing like this and his wife and kids were down here like this, and that wind and rain was hitting him. And he was standing like this, letting it hit him so it wouldn't hurt his wife and kid. Woe be unto the good-for-nothing daddy who makes his wife go out and take the heat and won't even stand up and be a man and take care of his family. Woe be unto the man who's too sorry to work and, and, and won't do right. and makes, I, know, I know men who make their wife answer the phone when the bill collector calls. I know men who put their wife up to calling the church and asking them for help. And they won't even on the phone. I uh, said, uh, can, can we have $50? And he says, tell them all 75. Uh, we need 75. Won't even get on the phone. Not even man enough to do that. I feel sorry for you if you got a father or a husband like that. I, mean, I tell you, what's he done? He stood there and stood there, stood there, and finally he moved, and that wind hit them, and they said, Daddy was keeping all of that off of us. Daddy was protecting us. I never knew what he was doing until he was gone. And a lot of times you never know how your father loved you and protected you until he's not there no more. And then sometimes it's too late. A daddy should protect his family against everything that's wrong. A father should protect his family against false doctrine. That means it's your responsibility as a father to get your kids not just in church but in the right kind of church where they're going to hear preaching. Can I say something to y'all this morning? I'm not sick of this generation thinks you go to church to get entertained. Now, I know sometimes we have a good time and it is entertaining. There's nothing wrong with that. But that is not our reason. We don't come, this is not an entertainment center. This is a place where we do business with God from that book right there. I'm not, a, I'm not just, a, a, just a guy looking for something to do for a job. I am an ambassador. I am a messenger sent from the Lord to preach this book. And it's every man's job to make sure that you your family is in a church where they're going to hear the truth preached and protect them from what's wrong. Sure is. I don't care if you have to drive two hours every Sunday. It's your job as a man to get your family in that kind of church and you're going to answer to God for it. It's your job to protect them from sin. It's your job to protect them from sin. You hear me? Yeah, listen, sin is ruining people nowadays. You know what sin does? Sin offers smiles but bring tears. Sin offers peace, but it'll bring fears. Sin offers health, 
but sickness brings. Sin offers songs, but it never sings. Sin offers sun, but brings clouds. Sin offers light and life, but brings a shroud. Success it boldly offers you, yet poverty is in its last view. Sin offers rest, but bringeth toll. Sin offers joy, but brings turmoil. Sin offers wealth, but giveth need. Sin offers flowers, but brings a weed. Sin offers good, but brings bad. Sin offers joy, but makes you sad. Sin offers truth, but error shows. Sin offers light, but darkness knows. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. This message keep, whatever you sow, you'll also reap. And it's your dad, your job as a father to tell that to your family. You ought to tell your kids what's wrong. Hey, all you fathers look up at me here this morning. It's your job to make sure your kids know what's right and what's wrong. And it's your job to protect them from what's wrong. And it's your job to make sure that they do right. Say amen right there. We just, with these uh, foster kids here, uh, I mean, I mean, my wife and I just uh, got our foster kids license uh, not long ago. And they put us through the tent. Lord, have mercy. You got to go. I'm telling mean, you, talk about third degree. Yeah, Lord, have you ever stumped your toe? I mean, they, we had to fill out pages and pages and pages and pages and have interviews and stuff. Lord, I'm, I'm telling you, you, you better have a good record, buddy. And, and you know what? Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that but uh, they told me they said Danny you've got to have a fire extinguisher in this house if you're going to keep foster kids you've got to have a fire extinguisher in this house and it's got to be approved it's got to be one that will work it's, and the whole time they're telling me this, you know, my, my mind's racing. I'm not even listening to them. My mind's saying, oh, my goodness, that will preach, that will preach, that will preach. Lord, good night. You've got to have a fire extinguisher in your home. They better be something that keeps your kids out of hell in your home. It's got to work. It's got to be the right kind. It's got to, I mean, the whole time she's telling me that, I said, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I said, uh-huh, I'm dreaming. I'm, I'm saying, listen, a fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher at home. Sure enough, we had to go buy one, not one of these little old cheapens. I mean, we had to buy one at like $60 and put it in there. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, they say, you can't let fire get in their room. It could hurt them. You can't let fire. And I thought, you know what? I, you ought to make a rule that no foster parent can have stuff in their home that would cause a kid to be lost without God and not be saved what you ought to have. They said, Danny, uh, you've got to have food. Can you provide food for these kids? I said, yes, yes, yes ma'am, we can do that. You've got to be, have the means to provide them food. I said, yes, we can do that and have been doing that uh, for a year and a half. And she said, now, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, we ought to provide food. I, as the man, need to make sure my kids have the word of God in their heart. Man shall not live. Foster kids cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. They need the word of God and they get it too, buddy. I mean, we pray every morning. We pray with them. We pray before they go to school. I pray for them every day. We read the Bible, we have Christian videos we watch, you know why? Because it's a father's job to make sure hey daddy, hey, you know what I told that woman, and she was nice and I wasn't being disrespectful they said, they gotta have rest they gotta have a, a fence, we had a swimming pool, had a fence that big around it, I've told you this and they said, that's against the law you have to have a four foot fence around the pool this high I said, oh, come on Please. They said, no, four foot, it cost me $1,300. Have that fence built. And I didn't like that. And she said, I'd do that. And I said, you know what y'all do? They ought to make a rule that anybody who has foster kids can't have HBO. Amen. Amen. HBO is 10,000 times more dangerous than a fence around a pool. Hey. I'm talking to you. Look up here at me. Be a man. Dirty movies is a million times more dangerous for your child. There ought to be a law. You can't have rock music or rap music in your home if you keep foster kids. That's what I told her. She looked at me like, 
Listen, you say, well, they need to be protected from ground. Molly run over that fence like, it's a, like she's a squirrel. It don't even slow her down. That ain't what we need. That ain't what they need. And I told them that. I said, this is a waste of money. Listen, you get, make me pay $1,300. I'm, I'm ready to do some preaching on that. <laughs> For no reason at all. I mean, I don't think you ought to be unsafe. They're, they're tore up, up. I tell you what you need to worry about more than a seat belt is what's coming out of your stereo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Brother Danny. Preach it. That's right. I'm telling you, men, it's your job. About time some of you men grew up. You're not a teenager no more. You don't sit out on your car or drink beer trying to flirt with girls. It's about time you grew up as a man, throwed your alcohol. That's another thing. You ought not to have no alcohol in your home if you're going to keep kids. None, none, none. Not a drink, not a beer, not no wine. Alcohol is more dangerous for kids than a lion out in the driveway. We had a bear in our yard the other day. Did I tell you all about that? Listen, a bear in my backyard. Kelly got a video of it. I wouldn't have believed it. And I, I had left my phone at home. She went and got my phone. Big old bear, about that big. Come right behind the house. I honestly believe that if I had, and I don't, never have had, if I had a wine in my refrigerator, them kids would be more dangerous that wine than they would that bear. The Bible says wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. You listen to me this, this morning? If you drink, what you say, well, I can handle it. You drink whatever you do in moderation, your kids will do in ex excess. You're pushing your kids toward becoming an alcoholic. If you have drugs and you abuse drugs or you smoke weed, you are pushing your child. Whatever you do in moderation, they'll do in excess. Don't ever forget that. Whatever you do in moderation, they'll do it. They'll carry it to another level. Well, Daddy did. Subconsciously, I grew up thinking, well, I remember Daddy doing it. And it's helped me in some ways and hurt me in some ways. Father's a protector. He's a protector. He's a protector. Amen? Amen? Movies that curse God and have naked people in them are a thousand times more dangerous to your child than a snake in the yard. It is. Ethan's done killed I don't know how many snakes. I feel sorry for the snakes up there where we live. Daddy protects. Daddy's a protector. Number two, a real father is a provider. Give us this day our daily bread. You know who we depend on for our daily bread? God. You know who kids depend on for their daily bread? Father. You daddies. You mean it was up here a while ago. That's why, listen, that's why when you grow up and have kids, you get up and go to work whether you want to or not. You go to work when you don't feel like it. My daddy, you've heard me tell it, man. Lord, how mercy my daddy went to work when he was sick. Walked to work. He didn't say, I ain't got no way. Walked from way over on the other side of Marion to Clinksville in snow. In snow. You think I'm making that up. Mom told me, she said, I've seen him walk out through there with snow up to here, leaving early to walk to get to work. You know why? We had three kids. We didn't have no government help. We didn't have no food stamps. We didn't have no welfare. There wasn't no, I mean, they might have been such, but he wouldn't have took it no way. He'd have said, them's my kids, and I'll take care of them. Thank God for a daddy that'll say, I'll provide for my family. Listen, men, it's your job. You are the main provider of the family. I know some of y'all get mad. Some of you say, I don't like his preaching. Well, I reckon it might be because you might be guilty of something. That might be what it is. Because what I'm saying is right. And what I'm saying is scriptural. And you are to be the provider. You are to be the provider, brother. Amen. I like that one guy told his daddy, he said, Daddy, I want to be the garbage man when I grow up. He said, why? He said he don't work but one day a week. He sees him come around and collect that garbage. And that's what he told me. I hate to say it, but he's got more places to go uh, than your house. Ain't that right? I'm telling you, listen, my, all, all three of my girls here this morning, one of them's back in the nursery, I, I think she can hear me. Uh, she has to take Big T back there because he tries to steal my, my position. And uh, 
uh, he, uh, all three of them know, I hope and pray to God. And I think they'd tell you this. They never worried. Are they going to come and cut our lights out today? They never went to school and said, Teacher, we don't have no groceries in our house. Now, I know things can get bad, and I know sometimes you get broke, and I know sometimes things are, I know that. I've been through some times like that. I've been through some times since I've been preaching that I had to load up stuff and go to the flea market and sell it to pay my bills. Been there, been there. I'm not fussing at you. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. A real daddy, listen, my daddy, he traded dogs. He sold shotgun. He done whatever he had to do. We didn't have the best of stuff. But I'll tell you one thing. It never crossed my mind that I'd turn the water on and nothing wouldn't come out or flip a switch and the power bill. That never even crossed my mind. I never even, never even thought about stuff like that. And you, we have kids come to this church saying, Mama wants to know if you can give us some money because they're going to turn our power off. And I know that's sad for the kids. It's so sad. And sometimes hard times come. And, and it might be my, that happened to my, it might be my change when I'm not being mean. But I'm telling you, Daddy, it's your job to provide for your family. You say, well, I'm, I'm dating this boy and he's, yeah, well, you better, you better undate him real quick. You know you can quit loving somebody. You know that, right? I know some of you girls are so dumb, you think you can't quit loving them, but you can. If he's stingy now, he'll always be stingy. If, he's, if he won't work now, he won't never work. If he won't provide now, he won't never. Amen? Hey. You might make a mistake sometimes. I've made plenty of them. The other day, I, you know, I got a lot of grass to mow, and I finally got me a big mower. This is my second summer with it. A 54-inch zero turn mower. Got, got on sale. Man, somebody brought out Lowe's, and I finally swallowed the, the, bit the bullet and went and got it two years ago. And everybody told me, they said, you can't, these things ain't made for heels. I, mean, I got a, a, a zero turn motor. They're not made for heels. Uh, uh, they go where they want to when you get them on a hill. Really, they do. You don't drive them like this. The back wheels, turn, and the front wheels just go around, 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 around. <laughs> and I, ah, ah, and I, I got, the first few times I mowed my grass, I couldn't even get it mowed. I was all over the place. I slid around, run into trees. I, I said, this is stupid. I'm going to take it back. And I finally got to where I could do it and learn how to do it. Well, my neighbor's got his ankle hurt and had to have surgery, and uh, I felt sorry for him over at my mom's house, and I was going to mow his grass the other day, and I was trying to help him out a little bit, and it's just heels, heels, heels. And I mowed the back side of the dam where the, where the pond is, and, I, and sometimes you feel it going down, and you turn it, and it just starts spinning like this, and you just slide around like that. Sort of like, it's sort of like being at the, at, the, at the carnival, rides, you know, the scrambler. That's what it, honestly, that's how it goes sometimes, like that. Sure enough. The other day, I was going in there. I got a little bit braver and a little bit braver and a little bit braver. And all of a sudden, that thing went whoop, straight down the hill. And I thought, oh, my. Here I go toward the creek. Going down through there. And it, there's no control. There's no stopping it. That thing was flying. And I put my legs out like this in front. And I thought, yeah, I'm really going to stop this thing. It'll break both my legs. I put my legs out in front to try to catch it. And, buddy, in the creek I went. The wheel went under, under mud. Cut my elbow. Uh, my neighbor come out. Uh, the girl said, "Ah, oh, you all right? I said, yeah. St- anybody stupid enough to try to drive a, a, a zero-turn mower on the uh, cat? All are running off the creek. <laughs> and it's 99 degrees, and I've been gone all week. And I said, hallelujah. No, I didn't. <laughs> I did not say that. I ain't got that far yet. But I do end up there, and I got... Uh, Ethan, I said, you want to come down here and help me? And I got a big old rope somebody gave me and took my forerunner down there and put it in four-wheel drive and hooked it up to it. And I said, well, here it goes. And I pulled it and pulled the whole, the back end of it just broke off. Pulled it. But I got it out. I got it out. I said, all right, now, stupid, go, try, to, try to mow that grass again like that. You know, fathers, we don't always do the right thing. We make mistakes. 
but we ought to own up to our mistakes and make it right and not make that mistake again. Am I right? He's a protector. He's a provider. Number three, quickly, he's a priest. He's a priest. What's a priest? I ain't talking about a Catholic priest. In the Bible, a priest is somebody who goes between Jesus, prophet, priest, and king. A priest is a go-between, an interceder between you and God. Now, that means every morning, and I do this. I've done it since I was born. Every morning of my life, 365 days a year, I get up and I get down and I say, God, and I pray for every one of them girls and their kids and their husbands and their families every day. I'm, a, I'm an interceder for them. I'm standing between them and God like Job did his family. And Job, he said, Lord, if they've sinned, Lord, don't hold, don't hold it against them. God, take it easy on God. Lord, take it easy on And I do that for my girls all the time and my family. And I you know why? I'm a priest. I'm a priest, brother. I'm a priest. I mean, did you ever read the Bible when Noah, God put Noah in the ark and destroyed the whole wide world? And when God, when the, when the flood came and Noah had his three sons and his three daughters-in-law and his wife, eight people in the ark and in there for a year, And the first thing he did when he got out was not go to a restaurant, was not build a house. First thing Noah did when they got out of there is build an altar, a place to worship. That that ought to tell you something, men. Don't think these kids ain't watching you, men. Don't think they don't pick up, usually they'll pick up your bad habits. Watch how you talk. What's these little off-color jokes? Dirty words. I know people that say and do stuff around their kids. They say, I better not catch you doing that. You do as I say, not as I do. That, they're going to do as you do. You can count on it. Or worse. Or worse. Let me tell you something this morning. I told my girls this morning. I said, we're family. We stick together. Whatever we go through, we go through it together. Right? We're a family. My daddy's family in West Virginia, buddy, they stick together. I've had that beat in my head. We stick together. We might kill each other, but you ain't going to mess with none of us. Amen. Amen. That's the old redneck. uh, (laughs) That's good philosophy. That's good philosophy. Man, my family up there, my aunt had 13 kids. If somebody come in and jumped on them, the whole crowd be over and beat that person half to death. I mean, cheerleaders jumping out of the, hitting the referees, the ball game, and everything. They're crazy people, they're crazy. You better not pick on somebody in their family. And that's where family's supposed to be. Why do you think God made families? Why do you think God made us? Why didn't God just make everybody grown and stick them on the earth? He's teaching us. He's teaching us about being what a real father is. I'll say this and I'm through. I want you to, I want my girls to say, you know what? Daddy will be there. Guarantee you, no, neither one of them walked in this building today and said, I wonder if Daddy's going to church. None of them, I guarantee it. I ain't much, but I promise you one thing. They know that I'm going to be in church on Sunday morning. I'm going to be here on Sunday night. I'm going to be here on Wednesday night. I'm gonna, listen, don't think your kids ain't watching you. Don't think your kids ain't watching you. I think some of you men need to realize that you're here, you're not here just to play. It's okay to play some. I tell Ethan, you're supposed to work some, play some, rest some. You're not supposed to work all the time. Are you sure the Lord ain't supposed to play all the time? Amen? Maybe we hear this morning. have this attitude I'm going to be a better daddy to my child Rachel was having a baby one time in the Bible her husband Jacob and she said I'm going to name him Benoni 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 means son of my sorrow because she was dying and Jacob stood up and said nope that ain't going to name him Benoni we're going to name him Benjamin son of my right hand and strength and that little boy grew up with no mama 
in a dysfunctional home, every reason in the world to go wild as a buck. But we came to the kings of Israel and became one of the greatest men ever in history. You know why? He had a daddy that said, I'm not going to let my kid grow up like that. Men, every man here this morning, man up, take your responsibility as a man. Be a man. Be a man. Lord, have mercy. I'd hate for my kids to have to call me and say, Daddy, please go to church. Good Lord, man. Be a man. Be a man. Work every day. Put food on the table. Put clothes on their back. And lead them spiritually to God. And he'll bless you for it. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand. Every head bowed.